All right, let us look at this problem called find the duplicate number. Given an array of integers, nums, containing n plus one integers, where each integer is in the range one to n inclusive, there is only one repeated number in nums, return this repeated number. You must solve the problem without modifying the array and uses only constant extra space. Okay, so we cannot modify the array, interesting. So uh, what do we do? First, let's think about how we would solve it. First, let's understand the problem. So in this case, it's an array of size five. Uh, and so the numbers are in the range one to four. And we can see one to four, the numbers are in the range one to four uh, and two repeats once. Here, array of size five, numbers range from one to four, three is the one that is repeating. Now, this example does not give a full picture. What is given to you is if your array size is five, then numbers are in range one to four. And so, you, but that doesn't necessarily mean you will have one, two, three, four, and then one of them repeating. It can, like, that is one example, but it can also have one, two, three, three, three. Like, it doesn't say that the number which is repeating is repeating only once. Uh, that's a bit that is not clarified here. There's a repeated number, but it can repeat as many number of times. So there is also possible that you can have something like this. The only bit that is given to you uh, is the nums of i is less than equals to one to n. And nums less than equals to one plus one. All integers num appears only once, except for precisely one integer, which appears two or more times, right? So these are also valid cases. Like uh, the reason I am pointing this out is because if it was only repeating once, then it would have been much, much easier uh, to solve for it. You know, you could have just dumb, you could have just done like a XOR based method or total sum based method and figured out which number is repeating. But that is not the case here. And it also says you cannot modify it, but let's just think about the different approaches that you do. One is you could maintain a hash map of size n and keep its count. And uh, so let's, let's, okay. I mean, there's no point in even writing that code, but okay, uh, we can try it. So let's say, we know, this and we go for each integer num in nums. Count of n plus plus, sorry, count of nums plus plus. And if count of num is greater than one, you return num, that is num that is repeating, and you do return num. Uh, you don't even have to do return anything because we know that this will return. But okay, just to, uh, for compilation, you could do return minus one, right? Uh, let's quickly see if this works. Compilation error. All right. Okay, submit. Let's see if it accepts this or not. It is uh, it is submitted also. Time complexity is good. Space complexity is the problem. The reason for space complexity is because your space complexity is O of n, which does not meet this constraint. Okay, let's look at space complexity of O of one. I mean, this is one way. Uh, now let's get rid of this. How can we do in in Space complexity O of one, which is where you, one of the approaches that come to mind is you modify the array somehow, right? So for example, you have these indexes, zero, one, two, three, four. These are the indexes. And these are the values. So values is one, three, four, two, three. So there are different ways of modifying the array 
uh, so one one bit could be you map index to value, right? And if you find a, so if you start from index zero, obviously there is no there is no integer with the value of uh, zero, right? Because we know integers lie in the range one to n. So the first guy is one. So what you can do is you can put index one at the value one. So that means you keep updating like this. So uh, okay, let me explain. One three four. So you keep this three. Three is what you visit next. You make it one, and now you go to index three. You make its value three. And you now look at index two. At index two, the value is four, so you keep track of this four, and you put this value at two. And then, uh, at index four, uh, you put four, and you get the value as two. So you go to index two. At index two, you find that two is already present. When when you find two is already present, then that's the problem, right? Then that's a repeated number. So that's one way. If you're mapping index to value. So how do we write code for that? It's essentially something like uh, we are modifying the array. Yes, we are not satisfying this condition, but just to understand. Uh, so what we do is uh, we go through. So let's say we start with nums of zero. And we keep doing it till we find the repeated number. And what do we do? So if um, nums of val already has val present, that means uh, if you start from zero, if you think about it, if you start from zero, it will it can never happen, right? Uh, at zero, you'll never have one. So from one, if there's another one present, that means you have to shoot everything. Like there is no way. Uh, so, so let's say there is this case, uh, one, one, two, three, four. Even in this case, you go from one, you go to this one and you'll find this already has it, right? So there is already one extra and the value index is definitely misplaced. You have to place it in the right place, right? So you can't find somebody which is already in the right place. So let's say, Um, just guess this is the case. Okay. In this case, you go from zero to three. At three, you put four. At four, you already find four, which is a problem, right? So essentially, if nums of val is equals to equals to val, that means that this val is the repeated number. And if that's not the case, then the new val that you need to take care of is this nums of val. And meanwhile, you put uh, at this val index, you put the val, so you map, uh, and then you can do, you can look for this guy. And that's it, right? So that's another idea. Uh, let's run this code. And submit this code. And this is also accepted. Now, that's one way. Here, what we did was we mapped the value uh, to its index. There's another way to look at it. You can also do something called as negative marking. So what happens in negative marking? You basically say if a value is present, then uh, change the value at that index as negative. So for example, this is your original array. Uh, one, three, four, two, two is your, uh, okay. So one, three, four, two, two is your original one. Um, what you do is one. So whatever is that index one, you change, make it negative. That's it. Uh, then you go to one. One has what? Minus three. So just takes the absolute. So index is three. So negative, what negative means is index one, if the value is negative, that means one has been found. That's all it means, right? So one has been found. Okay. Uh, now at one you have value is three. So three, that means, so you make this my, that means three has been found. That's all it means. Uh, 
okay then you go to 2 2 the value is 4 so at index 4 you make it negative which is great now at 3 value is 2 so at index 2 you make it negative so index 2 make it negative all great then at index 4 the value is 2 so you go at index 2 and you make it negative but you find it already is negative that means index 2 has already been found so that's another way of looking at it so here what you're doing is is you're doing negative marking something like this so you go through each index for and I equals to zero. I lost them. Plant plus, plus. So, what is the value? Value is nums of i. Okay. So now, if num, so basically now what you do is you want to make nums of i less negative. But if it's already negative, then what do you do? So if it is already less than zero, that means this index. Uh, this is this is the one that is repeating. Otherwise, also here you need to take the absolute value. And that's it, right? And okay, you can do return press one or something. Again, you're modifying it, but let's see if this explains what this works. All right, submit. Cool, this works as well. Now, okay, I don't know why it gave less space, even though it's still four of one space. But fair enough. Uh, now let's look at those solution where you do not modify the array. This is something you have to sort of know or figure out. So, so here, what we'll do is, is we'll map index to its value. So what I mean by that is, let's take this exam example. So for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 are the indexes. 1, 3, 4, 2, 2 are the values, right? So at index is 0. At index 0 what is the value 1 so from 0 you go to 1 from index 1 what is the value 3 okay so you go to index 3 at index 3 what is the value 2 so you go to index 2 at index 2 what is the value 4 so you go to index 4 at index 4 what's the value 2 2 is already a cycle so for at index 4 the value is Two, right? Two is already there, so it forms a cycle. And from two, the value is four. From four, the value is two. From two, the value is four. There is a cycle here, right? So basically, in this problem, you can see for any value repetition, you find a cycle, and you can represent this as a linked list. So you basically you can solve this problem as finding the point where the cycle starts in a linked list. Let's take another example. Let's look at this example. So you go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and the values are 3, 1, 3, 4, 2. So at index 0, from index 0, you go to values 3, so you go to index 3. At index 3, the value is 4, so you go to index 4. At index 4, the value is 2, so you go to index 2. At index 2, the value is 3, right? So at index 2, the value is 3, 3 is the one that is repeating. Now note that you may not necessarily have to add 0 as a node because you know 0 is the extreme case. You can already, already start with nums of 0, but that's fine. So that's it. Now, how do we write the code for this? So like how, how we solve uh, finding the point of cycle in the graph, uh, in a linked list. So let's do that. So how do you find the cycle in the linked list? You use the uh, 
slow pointer and the fast pointer, right? So first you, uh, so there are two steps in finding the cyclin link list. I would recommend going through that problem. Um, first, you take a slow pointer and fast pointer. So you can do something like uh, start both at the beginning. And we know that if there is a cycle, they will meet at some point. We know that. So while, or rather we do do while. Because first time they're already meeting. So while slow is not equals to fast. Until they don't meet, what do you do? You make slow equals to nums of slow, like move one step and fast equals to nums of nums of fast, right? And they will meet at some point. Now where they meet, when they meet, it determines that there is a cycle. That's not the point where the cycle starts. To find the point where the cycle starts, now you take the point where they meet and the starting point and move them one direction, one, one step each. And then where they meet is the point of the cycle. So now you do change any of the, any of the one pointers. So you can do something like int uh, pointer one equals to slow, int pointer two equals to zero, right? So where they mat and the starting point. And now you do again, same thing. This is the guy where they meet. So, and here what you do is simply So here the linked list is mapping from index to value, index to value, index to value. That's how the linked list mapping is that we already discussed. All right, let's run the code and submit. All right, so it's an interesting problem with a unique solution of using a uh, linked list cycle. Okay, uh, the time composite is good and uh, yeah, and there are other different solutions. You know, you can do it in loops. You can do it, uh, you can do it salt. Uh, you can do hash map. You can modify the array and do it in OOP and so all the different approaches are there. But this is the best one where you do not modify it within OOP and, and OOP one space. All right.